All right, so I'm going to be talking about this condition known as water puppies, or also known as walrus puppies. Um, so what is a water puppy? Um, so they're also known as walrus puppies, like I said. Um, these puppies are born suffering from edema, so that's an abnormal accumulation of, seri or of serous fluid in different organs, cavities, or body tissues. Um, these puppies can be two to four times larger than normal puppies in the litter, and these puppies can also become so big that they can block their mother's birthing canal, um, prohibiting her from giving birth naturally. And so, in this picture, this is the normal puppy, and then this is a water puppy. So you can see the differences. And there's some more. Uh, so the breeds that are most likely to be affected by this condition um, is commonly found in short-nosed breeds, um, also known as brachycephalic. So dogs such as bulldogs, French bulldogs, Boston Terriers, pugs, and it's also been seen in other dog breeds such as Labradors, uh, Yorkshire, Yorkie Terriers, and I'm sure a few other ones, but those are the most common. So what causes water puppy? Uh, the real cause of water puppy syndrome, it's still not really known, um, but there have been a few theories. Um, so one of them is it can be connected to parvovirus. Um, it could be something to do with the genetics um, because it's also, I think they said genetics because they were connecting it to the brachycephalic breeds. Um, it can be reaction of the dam's body to sodium, hyperthyroidism, the inability of the dam's body to process proteins, or lymphatic system malfunction. So some of the symptoms, um, it's kind of difficult to determine beforehand uh, because the puppies are inside the mom. So um, what they can do, uh, hold on. So um, some of the symptoms that have been reported in pregnant dogs with puppies that have anasarca um, is additional weight gain resulting from excessive fluids, water ring around the teats, swollen mammary glands, shifting of puppies from one side to another, and leakage from the vulva. And sometimes, like, if you have a breed that uh, can have this condition in their puppies, sometimes breeders will go get their dogs checked by a vet, and they'll have the mom's ultrasound to see if they can see any oversized puppies. And then the symptoms um, of the water puppy condition in puppies um, includes bloated or distorted features, rubber looking skin, flat chest with front legs splayed, um, or swollen or distended abdomen, legs, or head. And you can see from this picture, you can kind of see the rubber looking skin. Uh, and there's just some weird distorted limbs and stuff going on. So the treatment, um, if, if, the dog, if the puppy is mildly affected, um, veterinarians can hospitalize the puppy. Um, puppies that are severely affected, they generally recommend euthanasia. Um, and then for the ones that are gonna be treated in the hospital, um, normally the veterinarians will elevate the, or extend, I'm sorry, Elevate the puppy's head and extend the neck to clear the airway. And so that's what this picture is showing. And then they'll also encourage urination. So they'll, the vets will stimulate them to encourage, to encourage bladder expression. Or they can also be given a diuretic. And then I guess in some cases they give Lasix. Um, and that's administered intravenously immediately after birth. And then also the puppy will need a warming blanket or to be put in a warming chamber uh, to regulate the body temperature. And so that's a picture kind of showing what they do um, whenever the vets give the diuretic. Um, so if uh, treatment takes, the puppy will begin uh, to level out as the excess, as the excess fluid is being expressed from your puppy. Um, 
Mildly affected puppies will take between one to two hours to begin breathing normally, and they'll also have a lower they'll, also, they'll have a lower survival rate and will take anywhere from an hour and a half to four hours to begin breathing normally. Um, and then also, if they make it through all that, then they can go ahead and live a healthy and normal life. And so those are my sources. And so a little bit of background why I became kind of interested in this. I actually follow a few uh, animal and puppy pages on Facebook. Um, and one of this lady posted about having a litter and she was like, does anybody know what this condition is? And she posted a picture of her puppy in the litter and I was like, well, that's bizarre. And so I was reading through the comments to see if anybody knew what it was and people kept saying water puppies and I'm like, I've never heard of that. So then I just started to do my own research and I thought it was pretty interesting. So is Anasarca, is that like uh, the uh, like say scientific name for yes. water puppies? Okay. The Anasarca, yeah. okay. I learned a new word today. I mean, I knew I, there were those puppies that are filled with water, but I guess I didn't know Anasarca. Let's give her a soft round of applause. And Holly was barking because she approved of your presentation. Okay? She was actually begging for a treat, but that's another story. <laughs> Questions, comments? I'll let you point. So, uh, there's a couple. Here. So I actually follow pages on Facebook too, and I have seen this. And it seems like a lot of people say if um, a dam has a litter with one at one point, she'll most likely have lit um, other litters of ones. So I think I would think it would be just that. Yeah, I, that's what I was kind of gathering just from uh, what I was reading about it. But like I said, and it's most common in those breakies pal yeah. breeds. Right. Yeah, it probably has some genetic component. Who knows? If it's probably not 100 yeah. percent, but you know how that works. But yeah, I'll let you know. That's where I was about to chime in. So I work at a bulldog uh, specialist veterinarian. Uh, so all together I've been a part of 10 different bulldog C-sections. Uh, of those we've had, in two different of those, uh, we've had water puppies and not a single time have we even attempted to try and recover them just because they're normally so far gone. But yeah, it's for some reason English bulldogs, along with a host of other problems, uh, that's one of them that they have. Mm -hmm. Most of them are euthanized, but I guess if there's like uh, a mild case. Yeah, a mild so. case. They can, like I said, give the diuretic. Yeah, I see. Yeah. Um, so is the water accumulating in the bloodstream, or is it accumulating in like layers? Like you know, like I know, like when they have like encephalitis, like it's accumulating like fluid. It, maybe it's not water itself, but like it's accumulating fluid in between like the brain layers. So like, do you know like where? Is it just all over the body? Um, so the question was, uh, is the water accumulation in the bloodstream um, or elsewhere. Or elsewhere. Uh, it's kind of just everywhere in the body, in the limbs, and in the tissues and stuff. Um, one of my slides actually. Yeah, you would say it's excess interstitial fluid, fluid that's between cells and the tissue. It wouldn't be in the bloodstream per se. Maybe there's a little bit better blood mill volume, but it wouldn't it'd be yeah. tissue fluid. So it just kind of accumulates in different organs mm -hmm. and cavities and bodies. Question. Is this found in any other species that you know of, or just dogs? Uh, I'm well. So the question was, is this found in any other species or just dogs? <coughs> uh, I'm not sure because um, mm -hmm. I was only looking at dogs. Right. Um, it could be, but again, I, I don't know. That's a good question, and now you probably could look up Anasarca because I think that means just general. Uh, excess tissue fluid I think it is. in the newborn, and I bet you'd come up with a whole cast of characters. Do you know if these dogs, like, since it, they're so young and such a developmental stage, do they have, like, any, like, neurological, like, damage done from something like that later in their lives? Because, like, fluid accumulation. If it survived, you're saying? Yeah. Let's say? Um, so the question was, uh, does this cause any, um, further on neurological damage uh, later on in life if they make it through. Um, no, not really. It's They've been reported to, like if they make it through the treatment and stuff, they grow up to be normal, happy, healthy animals. Now the other thing is that wasn't mentioned here, but you know, if there's excess collection of fluid in the brain of cerebral spinal fluid, what do you call that? 
hydrocephalus. And that will cause brain damage. I don't know, you, you, young fetuses that are developing with hydrocephalus, they'll be born with a big skull, okay? It might even be blocking the birth canal. If somebody in the room gets hydrocephalus, your skull is already ossified, so it will deform your brain rather than be seen outside, okay? When it happens in a young animal, you can see it outside, the skull gets bigger. In an adult animal that's got all the bone plates uh, solidified or ossified, then the brain, I've seen pictures of a brain where half of it's pushed off and had so much food in it. Good questions, guys. Go ahead. I actually breed mice for the psych department here, and like um, hydrocephalus happens all the time. So that's why I was like asking about it because about like about like every like fifteen litters, like I'll find one that like has. They breed a lot because it, I just like yeah. watch over all the strains. Sure. But, like I'll find like one with hydrocephalus, and usually like it develops like about a week after like weaning age or something okay. like that. It's yeah. really bad because they like get really, it's really painful for them. So they basically get incapacitated and like scratched oh, yeah. and stuff like that. So it's usually like a human thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's amazing what happens out there. Berkeley is going next. Good topics though. I found it in humans and in cattle. Okay, good for you.